with Artsy Fartsy Creations and hey, look what I found in a thrift shop. You're not gonna believe this. I bought this table and two of these chairs for $20. The whole thing, 20 bucks. And the thing was, it was $40 and uh, the day I went in there, they told me it was half off because it was Senior Citizens Discount Day. So I don't know whether I was happy that I got $20 off or sad that I actually qualified for the Senior Citizen Discount. But regardless, I only paid $20 for both, for all three pieces. So this is gonna be a really fun project for us to work on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, first of all, how I make my own chalk paint. If you don't already know, and you've already been following me, you probably do. But I'm gonna show you how to make your own chalk paint. And we're gonna paint this with chalk paint in two different colors. The top we're gonna to do like in a white. And then I'm gonna show you how to do a transfer on top, a really cool transfer. Then we're going to um, antique it distress it and seal it and then the chairs and the legs on the uh, table are going to be a different color chalk paint maybe like at a teal i'm thinking but anyway it's going to be a really fun project and if you're looking for furniture other than your own home if you don't have anything in your home i'm going to tell you thrift stores are the best place to go goodwill thrift stores um it's a ha half happy humanity is another great place although they're i think a little pricey sometimes but just go check them out and um you have to kind of go in a lot, you know, kind of like at least once or twice a week and just kind of see what they have in there. I kind of stockpile some furniture every once in a while. But I found this, when I saw this for $20, I said I couldn't pass this up. And look at how cool this is. So you lift this up on both sides and it just makes a bigger table. It's a little piece of wood under here that keeps it up. So it's a really kind of an old table, like an old fashioned table. I thought it'd be really fun in a little kitchen or like a little pantry area, what do you call it, like a little cafe area. Um, and uh, the other thing too, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about this when I'm thinking about painting furniture in general. I want to find things that are inexpensive because I don't want to put a lot of money into it because I, then I can't sell it for all the time I put into it. So for this here, $20, and I figured everything else I'm putting into it that I'm going to show you how to do is probably about $60 worth of supplies and materials to refinish this entire table. And you could probably sell this online or like in a store, if you have a store, anywhere from probably $250, $275, I'm thinking, for the whole thing. Maybe even a little more, depending on where you live. But I'm thinking here, maybe about $275. So it's a great markup. Um, so try and find your pieces, you know, really inexpensive. I mean, I've even found stuff on the side of the road someone's throwing away and I took it. In fact, that's going to be another video. Um, but anyway, this is it. This is the little table we're going to be working on and I'm going to show you how to do, uh, let's see, how many different steps. Chalk paint, uh, transfer, antiquing, and distressing, and then the ceiling. So five different things. So stay tuned. We're going to get started. Okay, so now that I scrubbed it all down and got it all nice and clean, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly sand the top of this just like a once over just to give it a little bit of two so that way when I put on the chalk paint it sticks really good and I don't have any you know blobs of paint on there and stuff marks. So let me just show you what we do. This is the electric sander I'm going to use and it might be a little noisy but I'm just going to show you real quick. It's not a lot of work. Just go lightly over it just to give it a little two. Okay here we go. show you this chair close up because normally when we're doing chalk paint we don't have to do any prep but this one here is like so damaged I mean if you can just look at the spindles on the bottom half of this chair it looks like they had a puppy you just chewed the heck out of these uh, spindles down here I might want to fill that in with a little bit of um, wood filler just so it's a little bit smoother I really don't want to have that total distressed look um, so I'm just gonna fill that in, I think. And then here on top, it looks like they just dropped paint on this chair, and it's kind of thick, you know, like blobs of paint. So I might wanna sand that down a little bit just so I don't have 
you know, those imperfections showing through my paint after I'm done with it. But other than that, I mean, it's going to be a great little chair. I mean, it's really a total disaster if you take a look at this. But we're going to make it beautiful again. So just wanted to show you how the spindles look and what I'm going to be doing to those in a little bit. Hey everyone, Cheryl here. Just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me in this video. And we're going to have so much fun creating this new finish. And uh, But before we get started in that, we have to kind of do the dirty work. And that would be the prep. And regardless of what you heard from anybody and they say, oh, there's absolutely no prep when you're using chalk paint, that isn't exactly true. Because there is a little bit of prep in everything you do. So in every piece of furniture that you get, you really do need to have it cleaned down. You use a TSP. Let me show you that. Just get some TSP and wash it all down. That's the first thing you must do on every piece of furniture. And then you kind of have to evaluate, like for instance this chair. I was showing you earlier that um, it looked like a dog chewed up the bottom half of this chair. So there's a bunch of little holes in it. And I want to kind of fill those in a little bit so it's a little smoother finish. And then on the top of this chair, there's paint drips all over it. And I can literally feel the thickness on that. And when I go to paint this with my chalk paint, I don't want to have that coming through. So there is going to be a little bit of prep involved in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this down in here and I'm going to fill in the um, spindles on this so that this spindle is a little bit smoother than what it is right now. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I've got this wood filler and it kind of dried out on me a little bit so I add a little water to it just to get it working. So we're going to take a little bit of wood filler. Here it is. And I'm going to get a little messy on your fingers, but that's why you're supposed to wear work clothes like I have on. It's full of paint, so you don't ruin anything you have good. So here's what I'm doing. I'm just taking some of this um, wood fill that I kind of watered down and smoothed out. And I'm just going to rub it on here. See what I'm doing? I'm just filling that in. That's all I want to do. I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and then I'm going to sand that out and smooth it out a little bit better, okay? So there you go. We're just going to do that real quick. Smooth it out. Now, the next step would be cleaning it. Just take, you know, just get your TSP, put it in a bowl. I, there's directions on the, on the box. I think it's like a cup to a gallon or something like that. And then you just take a rag and just wash down your entire piece of furniture. Get all that grub off of it. Look at how dirty already that land is from this. This has been sitting in a consignment shop for who knows how long. And it's got grime on it and grease and whatever's on there. I mean, look at this. Watch this. Paint some of this for you can see. Look how dirty that is already. So you just want to get that nice and clean before you sand because if there's any like goo on here and you start sanding your project it's going to get all mucky and it's going to get in the sandpaper and it's way harder to get off than what I'm doing. So clean it first. Get in there and just give it a nice good cleaning. All the spindles, everywhere you see dirt, clean it up. Okay? So that's the first thing we're going to do. Then you're going to do a little bit of sanding. If you have, if it's a mess, I mean, if you have a really um, shiny piece of furniture, like a, got a really high gloss on it, you do want to give it a little tooth. It's always better to do that. You don't absolutely have to with the chalk paint, but I would suggest you just give it a little bit of tooth, which means to sand it down a little bit and just give it that grittiness so it grabs the paint, okay? So here's what you can use. You can either use sandpaper, which I'm going to use on my table over here and part on here, and I'm going to use an electric sander. So this is like a 150 medium grit, So because I'm just going to lightly sand over that. Or you can use a, a sanding block. So if you want to use one of these, that's fine too. This just takes a little longer than this. This is a whole lot easier. So what I do is I use an um, electric sander. And I put the sandpaper on here. And I'm not going to turn this on because it will be very noisy and you won't be able to hear me. But you just take the electric sander and then you're just going to get in there and lightly sand that around. Um, and then on the spindles here, what I'm going to do, I'll show you. I'm just going to take a piece of the sandpaper out of here. Rip the piece off. You don't need the whole thing. 
and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Because I already did one of these spindles and it seems to be dry. So I'm just going to take my sandpaper where I put that wood filler on there because it's a little bumpy. And I'm just going to clean it out. Paint it down. It's nice and smooth. What I'm doing. Now you may not have to do this, you might have to spin. But I just want to show you just in case you run into a, a problem area and you want to fix it like this as well. Okay? So all I did was I filled in those holes and I'm just sanding it down. You can feel it to see where it's still bumpy. There you go. You might not notice this now, but when you go to put the paint on, there'll be a really noticeable difference. You won't have a bunch of holes in there. That's about it. And I don't care if it has a couple in there, because you, this is going to be kind of an aged chair, and I can always just dress it and it look aged, but this was pretty gnarled up from that dog. <laughs> Looks like he was having lunch with the chair, evidently. Uh, and then you can also, if you want, if it's not a lot of sanding, just take your sandpaper and kind of work that off so it's smooth. See how we got that off? So that's what you want to do. And you want to take your rag when you're done. You want to clean that again because you want to get all that dust off of there. Get a nice clean finish going. And that's it. I'm going, to, I'm going to go back in and sand this with my electric sander, but I just want to show you, just go back and sand it, clean it, and then put it aside because I'm going to do the table next. Hi everyone, and today we're back and we're done with all the prep. So we've done the sanding and the cleaning of the chairs and the table. Um, like I had mentioned, you don't always have to do the prep, but in this case I wanted to because there was a lot of grime and there was a lot of thick pieces of paint that was dropped on these chairs. So I wanted to kind of get it smoothed out, so we, we did do, uh, do some sanding on that. So now today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the chalk paint. But before we get started, I wanna show you how I make my own chalk paint, because this will save you a lot of money. And as you know, a, a quart of chalk paint runs anywhere from 35 to $40 a quart. Well, I don't particularly wanna spend that kind of money on chalk paint, so I have a magic powder that I use in my own paint and I can make my own chalk paint. And you can get this chalk paint in any hardware store, Benjamin Moore or Sherwin-Williams. Just get a flat or a matte uh, paint and then you add this powder to it that I have and you can make your own chalk paint. So here's the powder. It's a really fine grind powder. It's almost like, it almost feels like cornstarch. That's how fine this is. So what I do is I add two tablespoons of this powder to one cup of paint. So I'm gonna put that in here. And then what I do is I add a couple of tablespoons of water to this. And then I mix it up until it's nice and smooth. It's almost like when you're making a gravy. You know how you have to take your, uh, well, cornstarch actually. This is not cornstarch, by the way. But um, you take your cornstarch and you mix it with water before you go putting it in your gravy so it doesn't get all lumped up. Well, if you want to do the same thing with this. I, you can just put it in if you want, but I like to you know, make it really smooth and creamy. So once I get it all done, it's, it's all nice and smooth, I just take my paint, excuse me, and this is one cup of paint, by the way, that I get at um, Home Depot. When I want to do a small project like this, that's about all I use. So you're going to pour that paint into the powdered mix. It's almost like making a cake here. And then you're just going to mix that up till it's nice and smooth and it's all blended in now once that's done you're done then you can this is a chalk type paint this is the same stuff believe it or not that you're spending forty dollars a quart on so if you want to try this um, you can go to my website i have the powder there you can order some and you can try this out on your own i'm telling you you're going to love it i save a lot of money and I, what i love the best uh, the best about that is um, i don't have to buy their colors. I can use any color I want. The whole fan deck is your color palette. So pick out any color you want. Mix it up and mix as much as you want when you need it. So if I don't want a quart of paint, I just need a cup. That's all I do. So here you go. Here's how you mix it. But I also wanted to show you this. So after I'm done mixing it, what I like doing is putting it in one of these little squirt bottles because it 
stage real nice and I can just squirt out what I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt out enough on this paper plate to get me going. And this way I can just throw this paper plate away when I'm done. So I don't have to be cleaning things out all day long. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and start painting the, uh, the pieces of furniture where I want it to be teal. So basically the bottom of this is going to be teal and the chair is going to be a teal. So I like using my little round brush because when I'm doing anything with a spindle, this actually goes on really nice. It's, it's better than using like a, a flat brush. These I use for the flat surfaces, but I don't use it on the legs. I like using my round brush because it actually gets into all of these areas and it goes on a lot smoother. So basically you just want to take your paint, dip it into the brush, and just start painting your piece. We're going to probably do this in two coats because it doesn't always cover as nice in one coat. So you just want to get it on there. It's not going to look as pretty the first time. The second coat is going to look a lot nicer. Go on a lot smoother. Another little trick I like doing is sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my brush and I'll dip it into a little bit of water and then go back into my paint. It just goes on so much nicer. It goes on really super smooth. So you get a really smooth finish with this. So basically, just start painting it on. It's that easy. See what I'm doing? I tip this table upside down because I want to get the underneath part done first. And then I will tip it up on its legs and get the rest of it. Whatever I can get to on this, doing it this way. See how nicely this brush works? I love, love, love this brush. Look at that. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to take and paint this entire piece. Once this dries, we'll go back and put a second coat on. And this dries really fast, by the way. Probably within, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, this should be drying up. You can go back in and then do this again. So, see how easy this is? Well, you probably can't see me down there doing that. See, now what I'll do is I'll do what I can see here and then I'll flip it over and then do the other side. Look how fast this goes on. Yeah. Easy peasy. So all you want to do is whatever color you decide to use, Either use your, you know, you already have chalk paint, then go ahead and use it up. If you don't, um, I would suggest you try doing it this way because I think you're going to love it and it's going to save you a lot of money. This little thing of paint cost me $2.98 and I only put two tablespoons of the powder in there and I have enough paint here to do my whole project. This will do my entire project right here. So. Go ahead and try it. See how you like it. I think you're going to love it. It's the same stuff that you're, you're paying $40 at work for. So. Anyway, I'm going to continue painting this. And then we'll come back. And then what we're going to do is after this is all done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to paint the top because it requires a different brush and a little bit different technique. So until then, I'll be back in a little bit as soon as this is done. So we're back and today I'm going to show you how to paint the top of the table. It's a little bit different than what we were doing with the, the legs. I just wanted to show you two different tech, two different ways, I guess, techniques you can use. One would be to use the brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer this. We're going to put two layers of chalk paint on here. And I also made the chalk paint um, out of the decorator's white. I think it's Benjamin Moore decorator's white with my magic powder. So this is what we're going to use. And also I'm going to show you another way to do it with a sponge roller. So if you want to use a brush, use a good brush. You need a brush that... Um, it really has soft bristles on it. You don't want to use a chip brush. You'll have all kinds of brush strokes in your, in your paint finish. So just take it, paint it on. Just, you might want to put a little bit of water like I had showed you earlier. Add some paint and just brush it on. Of course, the first layer never looks as good. So don't worry about that, okay? Just get it on there and just brush it on. It'll start to level out when you put the second coat on. You want to kind of use 
long strokes, okay? I'm going to go one direction so you don't have chatter marks. I'll show you what a chatter mark is. I don't know if you can see it, but from there. But like when your brush hits it and you go like this, you see those lines? So just kind of do a nice long stroke, okay? So that's one way you can do it. And you can just go ahead and just do the whole, you know, table like that. Or you can use a roller. Now this is a sponge roller and it's a dense roller. So you, if you want to use this, this is good too. You just want to kind of get some paint on there. You know it's not rolling very well. And then you can just roll this right on. So you're going to have to put a couple layers of paint on, just like we did with the brush. Doing the strokes. Now this won't go on as heavy as using a brush, okay? So you may end up having to do an extra coat of this. You just want to do a coat and then let it dry. And you get these like little tiny, like little, um, not bumps, but you can see the texture in it. So at the end of this, after you're done painting it, we can always take a very fine sandpaper and just go lightly over it just to kind of smooth that out. But this is um, two different ways you can do it. You can use the brush or you can use the roller. I kind of like the brush. Um, it just goes on thicker and you get a nice heavy coat that way. But you do whatever is comfortable for you. And then after we're done with this, I'm going to go to the next technique. And in the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that I was going to do a transfer on top of here. Then we were going to antique it and distress it and, and do all that kind of stuff. But I kind of changed my mind. I hope you don't mind. I changed my mind. Um, after looking at this, and I'm looking at the legs being a nice teal color, it's kind of bright and fun, and the top of this is white, it kind of reminded me more of like a, you know, like a Key Westy kind of look, or a coastal living kind of look. So I'm going to change this up, and I'm going to do the uh, transfer on another project, and maybe the next one on a table, which will be beautiful, but on this particular one, I'm going to change it up, and I'm going to do a stencil design on top of here, and then we're going to do some distressing, and I'll show you how to seal it off. I think it'll just be so much more fun. That's what happens to us creative people. Sometimes we kind of keep thinking of different things we could do. We could have done a million different things to this table, but because of the colors that I selected in the beginning, I think it'd be a lot more fun to do this more in a kind of a Key Westy fun little, like, I don't know, kitchenette kind of table. So we're going to go with that, and then uh, we're going to add two layers of chalk paint on here, and then once we're done with that and it dries, then we can go ahead and do the stencil. Hey, I just want to come back on real quick to show you another step I do. In between painting each layer of chalk paint, I take a piece of sandpaper, the 320 waterproof uh, sandpaper, and I want you to just lightly go over the top of it. You don't have to scrub it, just lightly go over it like this back and forth, just real lightly fill the top just so it smooths out the finish, you get a nice clean finish. Do another coat and then same again. It takes like two minutes to do and it'll give you a perfectly smooth finish. And that's all I want to show you on this step. See you soon. Hey everybody, we're back and we're going to do the fun stuff today. And as I mentioned in that last video, I changed my mind and I wanted to do this more in a coastal living kind of Key Westy look. So I picked out this really cool stencil design and it's a coral. And um, I'll have the link for you in the um, download of this video where you can purchase this if you like it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to show you how to do a stencil on this table. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to get a hot dog roller, that's what they call these, and a sponge roller. You want a dense one, okay? We're going to just roll this in our chalk paint so it's covered, but we don't want to take this and put it right onto the stencil because that will bleed through, it will make a huge mess. So what you need to do is take this after you've rolled it out with some uh, paint on it, you need to offload. So you take and put it on a, like a paper plate like I have it up paper towel and offload as much you know of that paint as possible. So you want it just kind of almost dry. And then you're going to take and you're just going to roll over very gently over your stencil. Don't press down too hard on that because you don't want it bleeding through. And you just want to kind of go in a couple different directions. And as you can see what I did here is I did it half on this part of the table and the other half onto the leaf of the table. So that way it'll look really cool when the leaf drops and you can have the other side done as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the stencil and I'm just going to move it around. Uh, 
sporadically on this table to kind of just kind of fill in some areas. So that's it. Just roll it on there very gently. And then you're going to take this off. So see how I taped it down here? Do you want to do that so it doesn't move? And you're going to just very gently take that off. And there you get your pearl design. Now before you take this and lay it back down again in another area, I want you to clean off behind there because a lot of times what happens is um, the paint bleeds through. And if you lay that back down, it, there's a good possibility that you'll get, whoops, you'll get that um, somewhere else in, where you don't want it to be. So then you take it again, now that I cleaned off that edge, and you want to place it somewhere else. So I'm going to probably put it, oh I don't know, maybe I'll do a little more on the leaf part of this. And I'll move it around so that it doesn't look the same on this, so it's not going in the same direction. So now I just put another one down, put some more paint on my hot dog brawler, work it off, I'll offload that paint, and then very lightly, just go over it in different directions. And you don't have to make it solid if you don't want to. You could just like leave it so that there's some white coming through as well, if that's how you like your look. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it consistent here. There we go. I'm just going to roll it in different directions so I've got it pretty much filled in. Then I'm going to take that off again. And I'm going to clean the back of it because I don't want to have that bleeding through. And every time you want to do that. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to move it somewhere else. Let's see. So you can kind of just, you know, eyeball it. Do, do whatever you want. There is no rule to this. There's no room or mine or whatever. You just make it your own and do what you feel like doing. You can have some of it coming off so that you don't have a whole one, like I'm going to do here, kind of give you an idea. Offload, and then I'm going to roll it over in a couple different directions. Look at how easy that is. Now make sure you don't overload, okay? I'm telling you, you'll have a mess and you'll have to repaint your table. And you're just going to keep doing this all around the whole table until you feel you're done. Until you have enough on there. I'll do one more. Let me move this out of the way. Let's see, maybe I'll just put one right here in the center and I'll have it go this way. So I don't have them going that way yet. This is going to be so cute. I cannot wait till this is done. And um, hey, listen, the other thing I was going to tell you too, I'm going to supply you guys with a, um, a price list of you know what furniture goes for after you're done making your piece. Because there is a standard on what you can get for a piece, um, depending on where you live too. You might vary a little bit. But I'm going to give you like a cheat sheet to kind of go with. So this way when you're out picking up a piece of furniture, you don't overpay for the furniture because you don't want to have to pay a lot for the furniture and then do all the work and pay for the supplies it cost to put it together and then come to find out you made, you know, $20 after you're done with everything. So I'll show you, you know, I'll give you a cheat sheet so it kind of gives you an idea of what you can uh, expect to sell your piece for when you're done if you plan on doing that. I'm going to walk in front of the camera, so excuse me for a minute because I want to show you what I want to do with the chair real quick, okay? Excuse me. Now here, on this chair, I want to do one on the corner, just on the corner of this chair. Watch this. This is going to be really, really cute. There's only two chairs, so I figured I'll put one in each corner, pop a little color into this too, do a little design. Watch this. Is that adorable or what? So now we'll have our table all done. And then I'm going to show you in the next step as to how to seal this off and what sealer to use. Okay, so stay tuned for the next step. 
Hey everyone, hey I forgot to show you this in the video. I wanted to show you how to clean your stencil. Um, it's important that after you're done using it, you clean it every time because the paint will build up on this and you won't be able to use it anymore because what will happen is it will have so much build up it won't lay flat. So you want to take your stencil and clean it really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean it with this stuff called crud cutter. See if I can show you in here. Sorry, I'm not in the camera. It's uh, easier for me to do it this way with you. This is called Crud Cutter, and I get this at uh, Home Depot. This stuff is amazing, and it really does cut through the crud, i got to tell you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this Crud Cutter, and you're going to spray it onto your... Look at my dirty sink here. This I'm in a studio, so you can imagine how many times we've used this and cleaned things out in. So here's um, the stencil. And then I'm going to spray it directly with the crud cutter. If I can get it in there. There we go. So well, I'm just spraying this right in. And then you're going to take a sponge. It's a little sponge like this. And you're going to gently clean it off. You don't want to scrub too hard because what will happen is you'll ruin the stencil. You'll bend it. You don't want to bend it. So you just want to lightly kind of go in there. Clean it off and then rinse it off. And then you just want to see how clean that came off. So this is what you want to do every time you're done using your stencil before you put it away. Okay guys, we are back now to do our last two steps and that will be sanding and putting a clear coat on this. And this goes really fast. I mean, as far as the chalk paint goes, it dries super fast. So this is like a project you can literally get done in like one afternoon because everything dries so quickly. When I put these stencils on, literally five minutes later it was dry. So we're good to go on the next step. And what I wanted to show you is how to do a little distressing, okay? Um, you can use either uh, a medium grit sandpaper or you can use a sanding block, whatever you choose to use. And when you're doing your distressing, you don't want to overdo it. You want to distress like in the corners, like right in here, where it normally gets worn. So you just want to kind of go on the edges here. So you just kind of go like that. And that's it. You don't want to do big patches on top of your table. It looks like a leopard or something. It looks really, it doesn't look natural. Naturally, when these furniture, this furniture gets all worn down over time, it's usually in the corner. So you should take like a corner here and just kind of rub off some of that paint. Wipe it off like that, and there you go. See how nice that looks? It looks more natural. So you're just going to take and do that all the way around your table. I drop the leaf on it so I can kind of do it in here as well. And I want to do it this way as you can. Kind of awkward working this way. It's the only way to like, stand up I won't do the video anymore. So I'm just going to kind of do it like that here. So here's another way. You just take your sanding block and go in here. See how it just takes the paint off? And there you go. Nice and pretty. This is going to look so amazing in somebody's kitchen, i got to say. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is you need to put a clear coat on this. This is a table. It's going to have food on it, it's going to have drinks put on it, so it's going to have ring marks and things like that if you don't put the sealer on it. I don't always do the legs on it, I just do the, the top of it because that's where people are going to be using it for the most part. So what I like to use is um, this clear coat from um, Faux Effects, it's called C500, it's a dull urethane. So you still have that matte dull finish on here, but this stuff here is used for furniture. You can even use this on floors. So, if this is on a floor and it, and it seals the floor and it protects the floor, you can imagine it's going to protect your table as well. So I love using this stuff. I want to use you know, durable stuff. I want to use things that are going to last. So I want to wipe this down real quick. Get this off in here. And all you're going to do is use a hot dog roller like we've been using. I'm going to show you how to do that. This you don't have to offload. You want to keep it on there. Just roll it in the... Uh, your thing and just roll right over it. It's going to actually pop up this color too. And just, just go in here and I'm going to stand up. I'm going to go in one direction after you're done getting it on there. So I'm going to go like this. And that's it. I mean, that's as simple as this gets. 
You can put two coats on if you feel more comfortable with that. Depends how much use you're going to get out of it, I guess. I've used this on backsplashes in the kitchen, so you can imagine with the grease and the grime and, you know, cooking in your kitchen, how dirty that can get and you get to clean it off, and this stuff works like a dream. So, I'll have this available for you as well. I have an affiliate link for all of these products. And I only use products that I really love. I mean, I'm not going to go using stuff that uh, I really can't endorse. So, and I can endorse this product because I've been using it a long time. They have a great product and it works well. See how nice that looks? So, if you don't want to get like roller marks, you don't want to do it like this. You want to go back over it, get a nice smooth line going, okay? And you want to go all over the whole thing. So I'm going to go do the sides and everything. Okay? Go over the sides. And this will give it a nice protective coat. And that is it. That's all you have to do. So, I would love to see your projects. It doesn't have to be a table like this. You can do this on any piece of furniture. It could be a coffee table, end table, a dresser, or anything you want to do it on. I'd love to see your projects. Please um, share your before and after pictures on Ask Cheryl Fine. Would love to see them, see what you think. And uh, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you had fun and can't wait to see your next project. And join me for my next one as well. See you soon.